Hi, my name is Dr. Meredith Pace. I'm an anesthesiologist at MGH Outpatient Surgical Center in Waltham. You're likely seeing this video because your surgeon has recommended that you receive a continuous nerve block in preparation for pain management after your surgery. A continuous nerve block is a safe and effective way to decrease pain after surgery for several days. So in this video, I'm going to review several pieces of information with you. The first big question that patients have is what is a nerve block and what differentiates a single injection nerve block from a continuous nerve block? With a single injection nerve block, the numbing medication that is injected surrounds the large nerve that innervates your surgical extremity. That produces numbness and motor block for about 18 to 24 hours. In this case, nothing stays in place. After that nerve block wears off, you have return of sensation and movement and likely pain. The difference between a single injection nerve block and a continuous nerve block is in the case of a continuous nerve block, at the time that your anesthesiologist puts the numbing medicine around the nerve, we leave a small flexible catheter that lays just next to that nerve. And we place that catheter outside your body and tape it to your skin using a clear adhesive dressing. That catheter actually goes home with you and is removed by you or one of your family members at home. Who can get a continuous nerve block? Patients that benefit the most from continuous nerve blocks are those where the surgical procedure is in likely to cause moderate to severe pain beyond 24 hours. It's also a great fit for patients who would like to avoid or reduce the amount of narcotic pain medication after surgery. It's also great for patients who have severe side effects, particularly nausea with opioid pain medication. The benefits of a continuous nerve block are several. It provides a form of non-narcotic pain control for up to five days after surgery. It also reduces the amount of opioids a patient would need to take, which likely reduces side effects such as nausea, constipation, and fatigue. The types of nerve blocks we place are for patients having shoulder surgery. We can place the catheter above the collarbone or below the collarbone for patients who are having arm or hand surgery or elbow surgery. We place nerve catheters for knee surgery in just above the knee and the thigh. And commonly we place catheters be behind the knee for foot and ankle surgery. So what will you experience after having a continuous nerve block? After the nerve block is placed and when you wake up from surgery, the extremity you have operated on will be extremely numb. You will not have any sensation below where the catheter is affixed to your skin. You will likely not be able to move that extremity either and that's normal. That dense block will dissipate or your arm or leg will thaw out, as we say, likely about 18 to 24 hours after, so the next day after surgery. At that point, the pump medication is going to take over. The pump medication is a much less strong medicine than what we use to place the block for surgery. At that point, you will start to feel pins and needles. You will start to regain movement of the extremity and you may experience some discomfort. This is all normal. It's also normal to have residual pins and needles sensation in that extremity. And that's the result of the medicine that's running through the catheter. You will receive a phone call from your anesthesiologist on the day after surgery. We call patients to make sure that you understand all the instructions that you received about the ambit pump and make sure that your pain is reasonably well controlled. You will also receive a text message from us on post-operative day two. The text message will ask you how your pain is doing and how many pain pills you've taken. You'll receive that same text message again on day five with additional questions asking about the removal of your catheter and if you had any issues or trouble removing that catheter. This will also serve as a reminder to remove the catheter on day five if you haven't already. Removal of the catheter is, is something that we'll, we will review at towards the end of this video, and it does not require medical training, is not a painful procedure. So common questions that we receive from patients who have continuous nerve blocks are, number one, the sound it makes. The pump itself is battery operated, and it delivers pain medication every two hours. When it delivers that pain medication, it generates a soft grinding sound. That's normal and indicates the pump is working properly. 
It's also very common for patients to notice some leakage at the catheter insertion site on their skin. As long as the dressing is not saturated and dressings are not falling off, it's perfectly safe to reinforce the dressing or leave it alone. Drainage is very common. It's also common, as I said, to experience pins and needles in the, sense, in the extremity that was operated on. And that's an indication that the medication is working properly and as it should. If you've had shoulder surgery, it's very common to experience shortness of breath and a droopy eyelid for about 24 hours after your surgery. That's a consequence of the block itself and usually goes away within the first 24 hours. Occasionally, that feeling of difficulty catching a deep breath or having a droopy eyelid on the site of surgery lasts the entire time that the catheter in place. Neither of these issues are dangerous they are more of an annoyance. If you have any questions about them or have any concerns, just call the surgical center and talk to your anesthesiologist. It's also, lastly, very important to take your pain medications, the non-narcotic pain medications, as instructed, even before the nerve block, the dense nerve block has worn off. This includes Tylenol and any anti-inflammatory medications that your surgeon has prescribed. The narcotic medications are perfectly safe and reasonable to take once you've started to experience pain, if you do experience pain after that 24 hours when the ner nerve block has started to wear off. So to review, we have a patient who has a catheter that would have been placed for foot and ankle surgery. So this catheter is affixed to her skin just behind her knee. The insertion site is right about in this area and covered with a clear adhesive dressing. The catheter itself is very small soft and flexible and is connected to the tubing from the pump at this yellow connector. This will be connected to the pump before you're discharged from the hospital. This is the Ambit pump itself. This is a battery operated pump that is, as I showed before, going to be connected to the catheter that's in your body. You're going to be going home with this pump in a small carry bag that will go home with you as well. The pump itself is connected to a medication bag that will go in that small carry case. This medication bag contains ropivacaine, which is the numbing medicine, and it contains 500 milliliters of that medication. Your nurse has already prepped the bag filled with the numbing medication and programmed the pump based on the provider's prescription. This medication, along with the pump, will last three to five days. The pump is programmed to automatically deliver a dose from the medication bag directly into your body every two hours. You will hear the pump's gears grinding for about a minute every two hours as this dose delivers. On the pump's display screen, you will see a number going up over time, up to 500. This is the total amount of ropivacaine in milliliters that is delivered from the pump. Additionally, the pump allows for an extra dose of ropivacaine on top of the automatic dose you receive, this extra dose is called a bolus. It is a safe amount that is available every 45 minutes if needed. If your pain is well controlled, you do not need to press this bolus button. However, if you are having pain and the bolus dose is available, you may press the button. Keep in mind that all doses of the numbing medication may take up to 30 minutes to work and give you adequate pain relief. In order to receive this bolus, the green blinking button needs to be pressed. This bolus button flashes green at all times when the pump is on and running. However, when the bolus dose is available, which is every 45 minutes, that button flashes more rapidly. This is how you will know the dose is available. The pump has a lockout feature when the bolus button is pressed to prevent you from receiving too much medication. This is extremely rare, but in the event that too much medication has gotten into the bloodstream, you may experience the following symptoms. Ringing in your ears, metallic taste, numb lips, tremors, restlessness, blurry vision, slurred speech, and disorientation. If you experience any of these symptoms, we want you to immediately clamp the tubing that connects the medication pump to your body by sliding this white clip shut. You may also shut the pump off by twisting the white bottom piece to the off position. Call the Mass General Waltham Outpatient Surgery Center for next steps. Our phone number will be on your discharge paperwork. 
If this occurs after hours, please call the 24-7 AMBIT support hotline, which will also be on your discharge paperwork. And if at that point you're still unable to get in touch with anybody, report to your nearest emergency room. If your pump alarms, check to make sure that the white clamp on the tubing is open, check to make sure there are no kinks in the tubing, and that this medication bag is not empty. You can silence the beeping by pressing the run pause button once. You may then resume the infusion by pressing that same run pause button once more. If you cannot figure out why the pump is alarming, call the AMBIT support hotline. It is important to keep the nerve catheter, dressing, AMBIT pump, and tubing completely dry while this infusion is in place. Please wait to shower until the nerve catheter has been completely removed from your body. And do not drive until after the AMBIT pump and nerve catheter have been removed. Now we are going to go over how to remove the catheter. Wash your hands thoroughly with warm soap and water before removing the catheter. Remove the clear dressing and thin strips that held the catheter in place. Hold the catheter close to the skin and slowly but steadily pull the catheter out. You may notice some tugging of the skin at first, which is normal. The catheter should then slide out easily. The end of the catheter has a colored tip, either blue or black. Check for this blue or black tip to make sure that the whole catheter is out of your body. You may see some leaking of fluid from your skin where the catheter was. You can cover this with a bandage if you would like. Please cut tubing with scissors and discard the catheter, tubing, and tape into the trash. Place the pump in the pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelope you were provided and return by U.S. mail. Remove the batteries prior to placing into the mail. Stop if the catheter does not slide out easily or start stretching. If you suddenly have any pain or tingling in your arm or leg while removing the catheter, please call the AMBIT hotline number. Do not cut the catheter and call Mass General Waltham Outpatient Surgery Center. If it is after hours, please call the support hotline.